Shout out to Walmart there. I don't know if you brothers and sisters can hear me. Are y'all able to hear me right now? Let's see here. Let's close this. Spin this baby around. <clears throat> Mic check one, two. Give me a second here. I don't know if y'all can see me or not. Anyway, let's do this. Let's go over there. And let me also go here, open this baby up, go to YouTube. To my channel. Golly, can't do shit on this thing now. Am I live? Are we live, baby? Man, can't even... Fuck, man. Yeah, it says we're live. Fuck, man. Yeah, it, it say we live. Yeah. It says we're live. Y'all just hold tight. Let's see. Anyone on the comment board? Yeah, this brother on the comment board. All right, Shalom. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you know your shadow band, of course. It's all good, though. It doesn't matter. I'm gonna get this information out. Just hold tight here. Um. Okay. I want y'all to be able to see what I'm seeing. You know. Let me share the video. Here's the first article we're gonna be dealing with as we was going into it on the other. Yeah, you know the devil shadow banner now. You know that. He gonna try to stop us every way he can. Let's see. I'm gonna go on it real quick. Stop us every way you can. Let's see. Yep, yep, yep. All right, it's on. I've been trying to save this one. I wanted to use this for something else later, but you know what? The Lord got us doing what he got us doing. So let's do it. Watch live. Yeah. And you know, and uh, all praise to Yahweh by Shimmy Howard Shai. Double honor to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone and Shalom to the hopefully elect. This is another attempt to do this lesson. This one is entitled, again, when you see these things begin to come to pass, two, part two, okay? When these things begin to come to pass, prompt hashtag guillotines. That's what it is. Let me see if I can hear it. Guillotines. That's what it is. Let me see if I can hear it. Yep. All right. So anyway, and then after the lesson, I can put the right thumbnail on it. Just hold on here. We're going to get started. So we're going to go back. All right. I want to see if I can see myself in the thing. Yeah. Okay. So lock your brothers for the delay. Yeah, you know you know Esau shadow banning it now. But it, it it doesn't matter. All right. So first, let's go back to the scriptures. We're gonna go to Luke 21 again. All right, and all praise again to Yahweh by Shemi Shai. double honor to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Shabbat Shalom. New lesson is is uh of course, and let me go here. Now bring up the, uh, this is going to be the thumbnail right here. So we can get it. Make guillotines great again. That's the thumbnail right there. All right. That's what you're going to wind up saying. So anyway, I got a few articles that I want to go into. And uh, we're just going to bring it out like always. The only reason I didn't want to go live like this is because after I'm done with the lesson, they'll basically 
you know, scan it with the algorithm and you won't even be able to see it till tomorrow unless you got a, uh, you know, you got a post of it. If I put up a post, you can click on the post and go to the video or whatever, but it's not going to show up in the normal search feed. You know, they'll basically delay the video and hold the shit back. That's why I try not to use this, but it doesn't matter. Anyway, the, um, you can watch part one of this video. Let's see if we can bring it up. Part one of this video. Let's see here. We'll open up another window to show those that, cause you know how simple Jake is. The people that kind of casually follow you, the niggas that watch all the camps, they don't know what the hell is going on. They'll click on part two and then they never even see part one. So part one is up here in the corner, surrounded by green. When these things began to come to pass, that was part one. Where this, you know, the stream kept messing up and we tried to do it again the same way on StreamYard, but it was screwing up too bad. So it made us go to this current stream that we're on now. All right. And I see you brothers there on the comment board, the water for hanging in there. And Lord willing, we can get through this. <clears throat> so first we'll go to this. Well, first we'll go to the scripture. Luke 21. And verse 7, and they asked him, saying, Master, but when shall these things be, and what sign will there be when these things shall come to pass? And he said, Take heed that ye be not deceived, for many shall come in my name, saying, I am the anointed, and the time draweth near, go ye not therefore after them. So the Lord said, There will be many false prophets coming in the last days, but when ye well, when you shall hear of wars and commotions, be not terrified, for these things must first come to pass, but the end is not by and by. So even though there's a lot going on on the planet, we know that we still have prophecies that have to be fulfilled first before the end comes, one of which is the mark of the beast. And there's an article here from The Sun. We read it in the first video, but we'll read it some now here too. Is everything going smooth on the video? Let's see here. All right. Yep. Audio is good, the brother says. So this is the article from The Sun, Micromanagement. It says, outrage sparked over companies requiring employees to be microchipped with officials calling to make it a felony. Not like, not like we was bringing out in the other video. Just because you get a little pushback and they got the little controlled opposition going doesn't mean anything. Eventually, the scriptures tell us that all people going, you know, they're going to do it. They're going to do this thing. It says here, some companies are said to have been controversially microchipping their employees in the U.S. The practice could soon become a felony in Alabama, though as though as an anti-microchipping bill is, in, is being introduced by three state Democrats. And it doesn't mean anything. It's just a bill being introduced. Control opposition. They're going to give you the uh, illusion of choice. But we know ultimately the New World Order crowd who runs all of society they want this thing to be done, so it don't make no difference with no little says The microchips can be inserted into human hands. You see it there. It says the bill aims to make it illegal for companies to require their employees to have microchips inserted. These microchips are usually inserted into human hands. They can act as passes to open doors or allow you to log into your computers. Some even let you buy things from vending machines. You see it. And they got that self-checkout markets and all that different stuff that they're doing. This whole society going to go digital. The money's going to go digital. Then how you going to make purchases? You're going to have to make purchases with this, this new uh, form of currency. But not only form of currency, it's also a form of record keeping. It's going to have all your stuff neatly in there. It's going to also give you access. It's going to be like a key. Many different things. It's going to make some people that are blind be able to see. Inmates that are locked up for life, they may say, you know, well, now that we got this chip, we can let you out. We can give you, put you in minimum security or, you know, put you on an island or something. Put you in a place where you can be free of the bars. You don't have to have you every day in bars. You can be out free, but you're still serving your term through this, through this damn chip. There's, there's many different ways they're going to use this thing. That's where it says in the scripture, they deceived them, right? They, they received the mark of the beast. So anyway, it says here, the practice is said to improve security and make it harder for criminals to hack into private data. And then they just give you, you know, a little shit here and there. Um, several companies in Sweden are also said to have chip staff. 
Democratic Representatives Prince Chestnut, Anthony Daniels, and Kelvin Lawrence are introducing the anti-microchip bill in Alabama. And really, if the, if the New World Order crowd, let's say these men were really against it. If the NWO wanted them out of the way, they could just make them out of the way and put somebody else in office. So they're not going to be able to stop this thing. It says they want to prevent people from being forced to get a microchip in order to work somewhere. But how are they going to be able to prevent that when everybody's going to do it? All jobs are going to do it. The whole society is going to be digital. All the money is going to be digital. You're not going to be able to stop it. You already have to scan in with your badge at work. You got to clock in with a barcode. Most places, you got to use the barcode on your window to get into the parking lot at the facility. How the hell are they going to stop it? The group hasn't revealed any businesses in Alabama that are forcing work workers to get microchipped. Representative Chestnut said they're being presumptive. They're urging people to consider the ethical and constitutional implications of technology. It says right here, advertisement. Recurring staff, requiring staff to have microchips is already banned in states like Indiana and California. Yeah, but they can always undo that stuff, right? You see here, everything's got to do with somebody boobies or their booty. Who cares? Who gives a shit? So I guess that's it on that article. I'll give out a link on the comment board. Let's see here. Hold on here. I'm going to copy it. I'm going to close it. And then I'll go over to the comment board and put up the link. Here we go. Hold on, brothers. Come on. There we go. So there's a link on the comment board for those that want to, you know, want to see it. You know, want to go there. And you can do a lesson on it yourself. Or you can, and another thing you can do too is you can just type in the headline on Google. And it'll give you a different articles on it. You know what I mean? You can have your own different articles on it. So let's read the prophecy of it. Damn it. You saw that? Let's read the prophecy because we keep bringing it out. And it's not going to go away. It's going to keep coming up. The mark of the beast is going to keep coming up. You stupid ass groups can keep saying, it's just sin, it's, it's spiritual mark. You can keep saying it. You know this shit ain't true. Revelation 13, 16. And he causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads. Again, when you go to the word mark right here, it's the word Greek word karagma. That's what it is, which represents what? A physical, doggone it, come on. You see this? Still catching hell. All right. Oh. Going live the other way is so much easier. You know what I'm saying? But it's all good. All right. To receive a mark right here. Karagma. Foreheads right here. Karagma or Karagma. A stamp and imprinted mark, which is physical. The mark branded upon horses, physical. Thing carved, sculpture, graven work, uh, physical. Literal, physical mark. And with this mark, you're going to be able to do what? Buy and sell. Right? That's how we know it's not sin. You don't buy and sell with sin. You don't buy and sell with philosophy. And, they, and these groups keep telling you it's, it's, um, it's a spiritual thing. No, the image of the beast is spiritual. Worshiping his philosophy is the spiritual part of it. Right, this the the, uh, the worshiping the image of the beast, but by worshiping the image of the beast, going to be a literal. They're going to put that needle in you and and shoot that chip into your hand or your forehead. They may have to you know do it a different way in your forehead, which is in your brain, a brain chip, but it's still the same deal. And he calls us all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads, and that no man might buy. Or sell. These are literal things, physical things, buying and selling. Can't buy and sell with philosophy. Can't buy and sell with ideas. And that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. It's just that simple. You can go to another version of the Bible. Let's go to the NLT. And no one could buy or sell anything without that mark. You're going to have to have it in you.
in order for you to make purchases because the money's going to go digital. Society's going to go cashless. The way you pay for things is going to change. You no longer have, you might have some dollar bills left, but they're not going to be accepting that. Then what you going to do? It's geared to buying and selling here. This is what this thing is used for. They're going to put you in that predicament. No, and no one could buy or sell anything without that mark, which was, and then see here, it gives you a little different, which is either. It's not either. We told you that the, the uh, different translations do go off, right? Which was either the name name of the beast or the number representing his name. No, it's not either. It's got all of it in there together. And that no man by, might buy or sell save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. You When you have the mark of the beast, you got the name and his number inside of that damn mark. See it? Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast. For it is the number of a man, and his number is six hundred three score and six. Six six six. The chip has a uh barcode inside of it. That's how you scan things, and the numerical value of that barcode, as with all barcodes, is six six six. It's just that easy. Let's get a couple of let's get that one. Revelation nineteen and nineteen. <clears throat> and I saw the beast. No, it's not it. It's not it. Hold on here. Well, yeah, you know what? We can start at 19. And I saw the beast and the kings of the earth and their army. The beast is the Roman Empire, which is America, Babylon the Great, which America, which is Babylon the Great, NATO and the EU, the Edomite world structure. And I saw the beast and the kings of the earth and their armies gathered together to make war against him that sat on the horse and against his army. They're going to try to fight the Lord as the second coming. Okay. It says, and the beast was taken, and with him the false prophet, a false religious system, headed by the Roman Catholic Church, and with him the false prophet that wrought miracles before him, with which he deceived them that have received the mark of the beast. Ain't nobody going to trick you and tell you, look, we need you to go commit a sin. Why would they try to trick you to commit sins? That's not what it means. They're going to come up with clever ways, such as if you're in prison for life, you can get out of prison if you take this chip. This mark, right? You were blind once. If you take this mark, you can see again. This can enable you to do miracles. You can jump higher, run faster, other things. They're going to deceive you. They're going to have celebrities make it out to be this great thing that you want to have. They're going to deceive you to take it. They're not going to force you to do it. They're going to trick you to do it. They're going to con you into asking them, can you have it? Can I please get that chip? My family's starving. There's no food. There's no money anymore. How are we going to eat? How are we going to pay for things? Well, you can pay for things with this little device right here. You can wave your hand in front of your car doors. You can start your car with it. You can get inside of buildings with it. They're going to trick you. They're going to make it seem like it's something that you need, just like they did with that damn arm candy. That convenience. That's right, brother. Just like they did with that arm candy. They made you believe that if you didn't have this certain stuff, made you believe if you didn't have this certain stuff, you were going to die. What did you do? Oh, come on. No, I need it. Give it to me. That's what you did. You took your simple ass and you let them pump you full of that shit. Now you weighed it down. That's it. Let's go on. With which he deceived them that have received the mark of the beast and them that worship this image. How do you worship the image? By taking this mark. You show them that you're down with their cause. When you let them bully you, con you, trick you, fascinate you, impress you to take that mark. You worship, you're showing him, look, I'm down with your system. I got your mark. These were both cast alive into a lake of fire burning with brimstone. There you go. You're going to get burned up by the missiles. If you take his mark, you're doomed. You can't repent from it. Let's go to Revelation 14 and 9. Damn it. Revelation 14, verse 9. And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast and his image and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink. It didn't say you might drink. It's possible. You're going to drink unless you take it out. You're going to drink unless you repent. It didn't say that. It, the, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of the Most High, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation, and he shall be tormented, shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the lamb. You're going to be destroyed if you take it. 
And that's all it is to it. There was one more I wanted to get. Let's go to Revelation 20. Because that Revelation 20 been coming out a lot lately. The other groups love to try to say, it's a sin, it's sin. Nobody's going to behead you for refusing to sin. This is Revelation 20 and 4. And I saw thrones. And they that sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Yahweh Shai, and for the word of the Most High, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands, and they lived and reigned with their anointed a thousand years. They refused to take the mark. See that? So let's end it right here. So when the hour of temptation comes, you got to be fully persuaded in your own mind not to do it. Don't do it. Revelation 3 and 10, because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. You see, so the hour of temptation is going to be when you're faced with the choice. Do you want to take it or do you not want to take it? Do you want to be able to buy and sell like everybody else by taking it or not be able to buy and sell and have to depend on the Lord to feed you like the elect is going to do? And that's it. Let's move on. So I got over here. Another article we'll bring up. Let's get this one. This one is dealing with Trump. Right? This is from Business Insider. And I hate this doggone website. It says, Trump has been asking his advisors questions. Like, what do you think of firing squads? When planning his campaign messaging, that's from Rolling Stone. Here's a, here's, here he is here. Uh, the King of Beige. <laughs> the King of Orange. Right here in the middle, Trump asked his advisors about bringing back firing squad, the firing squad and the use of guillotines right here in the middle. So he's pushing for reelection. He's going to try to be reelected if he does get reelected, which we believe he will. They're going to bring back firing squads and the use of guillotines. You see that up at the top. Sources tell Rolling Stone Trump has been talking about new ex so like it, has been talking about how executions could fit in campaign messaging. Trump asked advisors about bringing back the firing squad and the use of guillotines. Sources said sources also told Rolling Stone that Trump has discussed the idea of group executions. I ain't even know that one. Group execution. See these Hebrews like there's, there's 10 of them. They was on the street teaching. We're going to cut all the heads off at once or whatever. Former president Donald Trump has been asking advisors what they think about what they think of bringing back firing squads and other banned execution methods. Once he's the president again, he will be able to you know sign the papers to get all this being able to be done again. And if he doesn't get in office, whoever is in office, they're going to tell them to do this. And the scriptures already tell us that people are going to be beheaded for not taking the mark of the beast. So you can easily see how this goes right in what we've been talking about. Rolling Stone spoke to three anonymous sources about the campaign related conversations Trump has been having with his associates. According to these sources, Trump is, has on more than one occasion asked his aides questions like, what do you think of firing squads? Two Rolling Stone sources say Trump. Hold up had discussions with his advisors about everything from bringing back group executions to using banned execution methods like the guillotine. And if you say the word guillotine, then that's fine too. The French def the French pronunciation with the L together is a yaw sound, guillotine, but you can say guillotine, doesn't matter. A third source who spoke to the Rolling Stone said Trump has also privately considered if it would be possible to launch an ad campaign to promote these execution methods. This ad campaign would involve airing footage from the executions, the source said. See that? So it's right there, man. They're ready to go back to that whole old school type of way. You go against the government. They can always say, they can easily say the Hebrew Israelites are guilty of sedition and then say they got to be executed. Just like back in the day with Paul, Yahweh Shai, Right. The disciples and the different men of the Lord is coming around again. The former president believes this will help put the fear of God into violent criminals. The source told Rolling Stone. 
He wanted to do some of these things, but he was in office, but for whatever reason, he didn't have the chance. Let's go here. A Trump spokesperson told Insider that Rolling Stone's third source, third source's recount of a possible Trump ad campaign, featured television executions, is ridiculous and fake news. Either these people are fabricating lies out of thin air or Rolling Stone is allowing themselves to be duped by these morons. Nope, nope. It's going to happen. And even if Trump didn't call for it, it's been, it being in the news is exciting. I'm just going to leave it right there. I ain't going to read no more. Um, yeah, I ain't going to read no more. But I will share the link on the comment board. Let's go to the comment board now. Just the fact that it's even in the news is something to us. You know what I mean? Because that goes right in line with what prophecy has been talking about. And we may have to go there. Yeah, we're going to read the brother's definition, too. Let's put the link up. Anybody want to go there and look at it or want to go do a lesson on it, feel free. Because I got this secondhand from other brothers as well. And I just decided to do my own. I was just kind of collecting it, you know, collecting different information. So it says, sedition, GMS Saints of the Most High, conduct of speech inciting people to rebel against the authority of a state or monarch. Now, what we've been saying, don't take the arm candy. Don't take the mark of the beast. Don't listen to the, what, what they tell you to do, right? We've been telling you that. So they can easily accuse us of sedition. Now, we know pursuing the Romans 13. Let's go there. The scriptures tell us we ought to follow established government and authority as long as they don't go against the word of the Lord. So the word of the Lord says you cannot cut into your flesh. You can't have a foreign substance put in you. You're not supposed to do that. So we don't have to listen to that. But many preachers, teachers, prophets, Israelites may go to Romans 13 and 1 and try to force you, you to do what the government wants you to do. This is Romans 13 and 1. It says, let every soul be subject unto the higher powers. There is no power but of the most high. The powers that the powers that be are ordained of the most high. We know the most high set these devils up in authority. Whosoever therefore resisted the power, resisted the ordinance of the most high. And they that resist shall receive to themselves damnation right you go against established order of government you can receive damnation now that's in the case of if they're uh the government being set up over you we always use that when jake go against the cops and they try to rise up and take down esau on their own you try to rise up against the, the, the power that's set up you're gonna get put to death you can't even fight your way out of captivity you have to wait till the lord gets you out of captivity it says, for rulers are, a ter are not a terror to good works, but to the evil. Will thou then not be afraid of the power? Do that which is good, and thou shalt have praise of the same. For he is the minister of the Most High to thee for good. Now, you know how simple Jake is. You trying to say, like how the dude, uh, Sakari them, and that dude, end time teacher, tried to say, this ain't talking about, this ain't talking about Esau. Esau's not a minister of the Most High, but you didn't look at the word minister. The word diakonos, minister has more than one word. It don't just mean preaching and teaching the word. It says here, one who executes the commands of another, especially of a master, a servant, attendant minister. And what is Esau? Esau is in the, is in the, uh, the ruling seat that the Most High placed him in for the purpose of the Most High's will to bring about evil on the earth and to punish evildoers. That's what it's really, really going into. He's a servant of the Lord on the left-hand side. That's what it means in this regard. For he is a, the minister of the Most High to thee for good, meaning what? Like I went into in the video. There's some good uses for the, for the authority, for authority forces. Like if a nigga rise up and come to your house and steal your stuff, can't you, can you not call this devil and get these, devil, get these niggas up off you? Yeah, you can. Did they do something wicked? They're going to be subject to punishment by this, this man that's been set in authority. That's why the Lord tells us we're supposed to follow by, you know, the laws of the land. But if thou do that which is evil, be afraid. For he beareth not the sword in vain, for he is the minister of the Most High, a revenger to execute wrath upon him that doeth evil. See that? Wherefore, ye must needs be subject. You got to be under the rule of these devils. Not only for wrath, but also for conscience sake, you can't get yourself out of captivity. And to show you that this man is on some level a minister of the Most High, Psalm 17, verse 13 says this, 
Arise, O Lord, disappoint him, cast him down, deliver my soul from the wicked, which is thy sword. The Most High has used the wicked as a sword all over the earth to punish the Arabs, to punish the Turks, to punish the Chinese or the Japanese, to punish these people over here, to punish these people over there. He's been the whipping stick of the Lord and to punish the Israelites. Deliver my soul from the wicked, which is thy sword. The earth was given into the hand of the wicked. The wicked is Esau, even the so-called white man. And this is his portion of rulership, right? He got a, 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 a part of the earth. He's in rulership right now. From men which are thy hand, O Lord, from men of the world which have their portion in this life and whose belly thou fillest with thy head treasure, they are full of children and leave the rest of their substance to their babes. So they are a, a part of the Most High's uh, merc team, if you want to say that, murder team. Now, going back to the guillotines and those death, those different forms of death, it's right here in Revelation 2 and 10. That's right. The brother said it. He is the most high hitman. <laughs> One of his many hitmen. Revelation 2 and 10. Fear none of those things, but thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison that you may be tried. See that? So whenever it's that our temptation come and you're presented with that mark of the beast and you say, excuse me, you say, no, I won't take it. Then he's going to throw your ass into prison, possibly, that you may be tried, though. It's not because of something he's doing. It's because of what the Lord is doing. It's going to be for a trial of your faith. And you should have tribulation 10 days. Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee a crown of life. Why is it mentioned in prison and death? Because you possibly could be thrown into prison and put to death. That's why they're bringing back the firing squads, the guillotines, the public lynchings, and the hangings, and all of that. Because it's in the scriptures. It's happened before. We read Revelation 20 already. Let's go back to it. Revelation 20 and 4. And I saw thrones and they that sat upon them. And judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded. Mm, that were beheaded. For the witness of Yahweh Shai and for the word of the Most High. And which had not worshipped the beast. Neither his image, neither have received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands, and they live and reign with the anointed a thousand years. There you go. You could possibly be damn beheaded if you don't want to play the devil's game. And I'm gonna show you something. Let's see. One good thing about having, you know, using this apparatus, I can look up stuff. Let's see if I can look up this scene from this movie. Hold up, y'all. If I can get my search to work. Nah, I don't want that right. Okay. Six, the mark unleashed. Guillotine. There's a scene from the mark unleashed with the damn guillotine. Let's see if we can get it. successful although we are at a loss to understand why watch this is a christian movie it was called uh six the mark unleashed if this is the right scene let's see if it's it yeah listen and the implant were predicted over two thousand years ago and right in here the implant is called the mark of the beast anyone who accepts it is going to hell that's right my friend Hell exists, and the Antichrist is going there. All right, so the Christians got it wrong. Hell doesn't exist, and there's no such thing as one Antichrist. But for the sake of what we're talking about, listen further. Do you believe this guy? But you don't have to. <laughs> you can have hope in Christ Jesus. Let's go forward. So now they was torturing this one guy, the guy on the right right here with the bald head. He's playing the part of Satan. And this man that got shackled up is playing the part of, of, of Christians or believers. It's been six days. He must make a decision. You heard that? Hey, they're going to cash in the prison and say, uh, uh, what does it say? Hold on. We'll come right back to that. Revelation 2 and 10. They say it's been six days. He must make a decision. Fear none of those things, but thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison that you may be tried, and you shall have tribulation ten days. See, these devils think it'll leave me in a literal ten days, which it doesn't have to mean literal ten days, just a certain amount of time. 
be thou faithful in the death and I will give thee a crown of life. So in the movie, they tried to make it exactly like what the scriptures say. Not really fully understanding. Listen, though. The hour of temptation. What do you choose? <laughs> what was that? Perfect love. Guess out fear. That was the wrong choice. I forgive you. Stupid ass Christian. Here this man torturing the shit out of you. And you're going to tell him you forgive him. No, fuck you. I'm going to come back with spiritual power and melt you, bitch. I forgive you. Now, when he didn't make the choice they wanted to make, what you see, lead him to the damn guillotine. You see it? Lead him to the guillotine. Listen. Look. I can see heaven opening. The Son of Man, Jesus Christ Himself, standing at the right hand of God. <laughs> That's his ex-woman right there. That's his ex-woman who um wanted to be back with him. He wanted her back. He was still in love with her. And she tried to tempt him to take that damn mark. But he said, nah, later for you. Then Jesus declared, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me, he will come that. to me. The touch of Christ. But look. It was the wrong choice. He wound up taking it. show us the uh i wanted to see the scene with it what, what jake was on there it was a jake on there he wound up taking he wound up taking his death went to the guillotine right here let's see Those who trust in the Lord are like Mount Zion, which cannot be shaken but endures forever. The scepter of the wicked will not remain over the land allotted to the righteous. 
Do good, O Lord, to those who follow you, but to those who reject your ways, bring judgment. on the comment board so you can easily see how these uh, articles will be public executions did, did he give it to us no didn't he? Oh, oh, hold on y'all I tell you what just hold on here let's do this Come at me momentarily. I'm going to pull it up over here. Give it to you. Let's get back to it. So I'll read some of these off the comment board because they're excellent scriptures the brothers put up. Let's read a few of them. Um, yeah. All right. <clears throat> so this is... Uh, dog on you. Come on. There we go. So this is... Neil the Pio, Proverbs 3 and 5. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not into thine own understanding and all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy paths. That's right. Absolutely, bro. Azan of my 1 John 2, 18. Little children, it is the last time and as ye have heard that Antichrist shall come. Even now are there many Antichrists whereby ye know that it is the last time. Right. That's stupid logic of the Christians. They love to try to take themselves, they try to take the white man out like he ain't the devil. Like it's, just, it's another guy coming, the Antichrist. No, it's them. Now, any person could be an Antichrist for, for, uh, to begin with. Anti meaning against Christ is the anointed. See? Azan Amoth again, Luke 21 and 12. But before all these, they shall lay their hands on you and persecute you, delivering you up to the synagogues in, and into prisons, being brought before kings and rulers, for in my name's sake, now that was to the disciples, but it's going to happen again in our time. This is Jim S. Truth Be Told, 2 Maccabees 7, 14. So when he was ready to die, he said thus, it is good being put to death by men to look for hope from the Most High to be raised up again by him. As for thee, thou shalt have no resurrection to life. And this is what uh, one of the seven brothers from that story, the Maccabees was were tortured for not eating pork. This is what he said to the Greeks before they put him to death. Same as you saw that man doing in the, in the um in that movie. And the Christians do like they are the Israelites, but they're not. But they had the one scene correct when Jake was walking up there, yelling out a scripture while they was about to put him to death. They had that part right. This is uh GMS. Truth be told, Ecclesiastes forty one and three. Fear not the sentence of death. Remember them that have been before thee and that come after, for this is the sentence of the Lord over all flesh. It's just it's just a matter of when. It's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. Are you going to die before the Lord comes back, during his return, or are he going to save you all the way through and then and save you in the end? Either way, if you're of the lake, you'll come back. Jim S. Truth be told, 1 Thessalonians 5 and, and 9, For the Most High hath not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord, Yahweh Shai, who died for us, that whether we wake or sleep, whether you dead on the, you know, whether you go back to the spiritual realm before the end and sleep, I mean, before you, I'm sorry, whether you live all the way up to the end or you sleep, go back to the spiritual realm, right? Either way, who died for us, that whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with him. Wherefore, comfort yourselves together and edify one another, even as ye do. 
which is a comforting thing. Even if we happen to, you know, if we have to go and take that walk and go to the guillotine or whatever form of death, for the Lord's sake, we'll do it. We know we're coming back with him when he comes, so whatever. This is our now. GMS and his likeness, Philippians 1 and 20, according to my earnest expectation and my hope that in nothing I shall be ashamed, but with that with all boldness, as always, so now also the anointed shall be magnified in my body, whether it be by my life or by my death or by death. That's great. For me to live is the anointed and to die is gain. That's a great attitude, you know, to have. Man, that's heavy. That's a heavy scripture. That's beautiful. So let's go ahead now and get to this last article, um, which is another great one. Let's get it. <clears throat> this one is from, uh, I got this one from this morning from the brother Jim S. Watchman. He did a lesson on this. It's from RT, RT News. It says right here, and it's got to do with all of us, the same as these other articles. Police told to keep record of conspiracy theorists and communists. Now, this is in Australia, but if you know, they do a lot of things in Australia as test runs for, for America. It says law enforcement in Australia's Queensland must report interactions with extremists to counter terror teams. The Queensland police are required to report interactions with people who allegedly hold a range of ideological beliefs. See that? Including conspiracy theorists. Now, we can be classified as conspiracy theorists. What do we say? There's a conspiracy going on to depopulate, to keep the Israelites from learning the truth, right? To make us all take the mark of the beast, to establish the new world order, on and on. All these different things, they classify as conspiracy theorists. You see, they're the ones that are making up the words and the, and the terms, and they decide what's, you know, what, what uh, is wrong in their world. It says, including conspiracy theorists, according to an email sent by sent to all members of the Queensland Police Service on Thursday and seen by ABC News. Police must record interactions with such individuals in the state. Hold on here. Can't get this thing that right. <clears throat> Police must record interactions with such individuals in the state's Q Prime database at the first available opportunity, the email states, <clears throat> explaining that in addition to conspiracy theorists, religious, social, or political extremists, and sovereign citizens, as well as people with ideologies relating to capitalism, communism, socialism, or Marxism, are also fit the bill. They can, in this, we know what does the devil do? categorize the greek word categorio he categorizes you officers were also told to report all matters that indicate concerning or escalating behavior due to ideological beliefs including religious and single issue ideologies and advise of the risk inherent in dealing with these groups and just like during the time of esther they want to put all the israelites to death because what do they want to do they want to all come together in unity and forget about their laws and come under one umbrella and one set of laws. And they said that the Israelites were the ones that were against that. So they had to put them to death. Let's see if we can get that now. Lord willing, I can, I can bring that scripture up. Let's see here. Right? It's in uh, the book of Esther. Let's see. Uh, in one day. With their children. In one in. Hold on here. If a brother know what that is, will you please put that up? I don't remember exactly how it's worded. It's in the book of Esther, though. Um, you know what? Never mind. I got it. <clears throat> so from the editions of the book of Esther, right? So like you. I got to read some of this. Um, This was a letter that was written to the great king Artaxerxes, he wrote to his, let me just start at the top. The copy, this is uh, the additions to Esther chapter 13. The copy of the letters was this. The great king Artaxerxes writeth these things to the princes and governors that are under him from India unto Ethiopia and in 107 and 20 provinces. Okay. Let's jump right to it. Um, verse 3. 
Now, when I asked my counselors how this might be brought to pass, Amon, which was Haman, the enemy of the Israelites, which has got somebody like Vocab Malone, which we call him Haman, Haman Malone, that he sailed in wisdom among us and was approved for us for his constant goodwill and steadfast fidelity and had the honor of second place in the kingdom. Declare unto us that in all nations throughout the world there was scattered a certain malicious people that had laws contrary to all nations and continually despised the commandments of kings so as the uniting of our kingdoms honorably intended by us cannot go forward. Seeing then we understand that this people alone is continually in opposition unto all men, differing in the strange manner of their laws and evil affected to our state, working all the mischief they can that our kingdom may not be firmly established. Therefore have we commanded that all, all they that are signified in writing unto you by Amon, who was ordained over the affairs and is next unto us, shall all their wives and children be utterly destroyed by the sword of their enemies without all mercy and pity the 14th day of the 12th month of dark of this present year, that they who of old and now also are malicious may in one day with violence go into the grave and so ever hereafter cause our affairs to be settled, well settled and without trouble. This is what they wanted to do to the Israelites. And it's going to be the same vibration now when you go against a stupid ass mark of the beast, a stupid ass new world order, they're going to say them niggas out there. And see, the two thirds, they're going to be with going with what the, what the world wants to do. But the Lord said you can't do that. Let's get a scripture real quick. Um, I got another one. This is Psalms 94. Let's see if I can get it. See, the Lord don't want us going along with the world. And it's going to come turbulent times where you're going to have to stand up. You're going to have to stand up and step out on faith. All that weak shit got to go. Psalm 94, 16, who will rise up for me against the evildoers? Or who will stand up for me against the workers of iniquity? And the answer is the men of the Lord. Unless the Lord had been my help, my soul had almost dwelt in silence. Let's get Psalms 124 and 1. We'll read that after we finish the article. Let's go back to the article. Okay, so right here it says, Authorities are calling the incident a religious terror attack, citing, train, citing the train's Christian fundamentalist beliefs, a strain known as premillennial, premillennialism, whose adherents prepare for the end. Look, let's go back. A strain known as the premillennialism, Reunism, whose adherents prepare for and anticipate the end of days. If you believe in the end of days, these devils are looking at you ready to sharpen a sword. A police investigation concluded the family had acted as, as an autonomous cell to carry out their tax. So they're talking about people that carry out attacks, but they're going to try to put us in that same mind frame. And they even got stupid niggas that they hired and set up agent provocateurs that they're going to cause to do a little different shit and they can blame it all on us. We know that that's there. Period. We know that's there. That's why we tell brothers, watch out who you deal with. So that's pretty much it on that. I can put the link up to this article as well. Let's see here. Let's put it up. And we'll go back and read Luke and then we'll shut it down. There you go. There's the link. A lot of great scriptures, brothers. The water for, for posting those. Jim S. Troopy told Esther 3 and 8. And Haman said unto Ahasuerus, There's a certain people scattered abroad and dispersed among, all the, among the people in all the provinces of thy kingdom. And their laws, and their laws are diverse from all, from all people. Neither keep they the king's laws. Therefore, it is not for the king's prophet to suffer them. If it please the king, let it be written that they may be destroyed. And I will pay 10,000 talents of silver to the hands of those that have the charge of the business to bring it into the king's treasuries. And that was done by who? Our enemy, Haman, the damn Amalekite. And who was in authority today? His descendants, the fucking Amalekites, fake ass Jews, Jewish people. They're the Amalekites. And they got all this behind the scenes. They behind the scenes. 
pulling all the strings. And you got simple niggas hollering about they, they can be saved and Edomites is not the white man and all this other shit. Yeah, yeah. Psalms 124. If it had not been the Lord who was on our side, now may Israel say, if it had not been the Lord who was on our side when men rose up against us, then they had swallowed us up quick. When their wrath was kindled against us, then the waters had overwhelmed us. The stream had gone over our soul. Then the proud waters had gone over our soul. Blessed be the Lord power who hath not given us as a prey to their teeth. Our soul is escaped as a bird out of the snare of the fowlers. The snare is broken and we are escaped. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Who, what's his name? Yahweh. Yahweh Bahashem. Yahweh Shai. You get to him in the name of his son, Yahweh Shai. Who made heaven and earth. This is how we're going to escape these devils. The elect that, that survives, they're going to get through all the tribulation, through all the persecution coming, and they're going to survive. Let's go now to the end. This is uh, Luke 21. In verse, I'm going to go to verse 14. It says, Settle it therefore in your hearts not to meditate before what ye shall answer. For I will give you a mouth and wisdom, which all your adversaries should not be able to gainsay nor resist. And ye shall be betrayed, both by parents and brethren and kinsfolk and friends. And some of you they shall cause to be put to death. What does that mean? The time is going to come where you, you love these relatives and all this stuff, these friends. But if they ain't in the truth, you can't really pay that much attention. And even and even some in the truth are going to betray. But especially those outside of the truth, when food gets short, when the mark of the beast is here, right? When 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 society is falling, when hell come on the earth for real, people are going to be worried about themselves. And when a greedy fat nigga or a greedy skinny nigga or a greedy grimy nigga get off of food, Shelter, clothing, can be back on top just to give you up. Don't think they won't do it. They will do it. Niggas have sold out for less. Don't think they won't do it. And some of them are your relatives. Some of them claim they're in the truth. So don't don't be fooled. It says, ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. I got a lesson I want to do on that later. These two-third niggas hate us. Online hate of the Israelites is rampant out there in the world. But there shall not an hair of your head perish. Meaning what? Your place is, is sealed with the Lord. Those that are meant to be with the Lord, that are of the elect, no matter what happens. If something happens to you and you have to visit the guillotine, or if you get put to death by an angry mob of unruly niggas, you know how they did with Stephen, stone them. If you know, the two-thirds come against us and put some of us to death, it doesn't matter. We're going to still come back. In your patience, possess your souls. Then this is the Lord talking to the disciples back then. He says, when ye shall see Jerusalem compass with armies, then know that the desolation thereof is not. This is going to 70 AD. Then let them which are in Judea flee to the mountains and let them which are in the midst of it depart out and let not them that are in the countries enter therein too. For these be the days of vengeance and all things which are written may be fulfilled. So that happened that came upon the Israelites who went into all nations. Now we go to the return of the anointed. And there should be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars. Are we not seeing all that? We've seen comets. We've seen chariot signs. Oh, don't forget. They're saying they shot down UFOs, which is a lie. Okay? But you're seeing different signs. Solar and lunar eclipses. All kind of stuff. And upon the earth, the stress of nations would perplex all kind of uproars. And World War Three is quickly becoming. It's about to go uh, uh, from a cold war to a hot war. Men's hearts fell in them for fear. And for looking after those things which are coming on the earth, the suicide rates are up. People are afraid. They worry. For the powers of heaven shall be shaken. And then shall they see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. You're going to see the Lord coming in the chariots. And when these things begin to come to pass, then look up and lift up your heads for your redemption draw it nigh. And we can see it. We had just read articles dealing with the microchip, dealing with Trump. And the, and the uh, authorities want to bring back um, mass death, uh, mass executions, guillotines, firing squads, right? You know, they already got the gas chamber set up and that damn, what's that stuff? And they put the, the medicine in your arms. What's that shit called? Uh, lethal injection. And when these things begin to come to pass, then look up and lift up your heads for your redemption draweth nigh. 
And he spake to them a parable, Behold the fig tree and all the trees. When they now shoot forth, ye see and know of your own selves that summer is nigh at hand. Likewise ye, when ye see these things come to pass, know ye that the kingdom of the Most High is nigh at hand. Verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass away till all be fulfilled. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. So we know that these things are definitely going to come to pass. They're definitely going to happen. The hour of temptation is coming. You niggas can keep hollering about the mark of the beast is sin all you want. That just really means you're going to more than likely take it. Verse 34, and take heed to yourselves, lest at any time your hearts be overcharged with surfeiting and drunkenness and cares of this life, so that they come upon you unawares. For as a snare shall it come on all them that dwell on the face of the whole earth. It's going to be like a trap, snap, slamming shut. Watch ye therefore and pray always that ye may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. So that's what we're praying for. We're praying that the Lord give us the strength to endure these times and get through all this stuff that's coming on the earth because we know it's about to get off the hook. And it's just the bottom line. We can't do shit about it. We can't make it where Jacob's trouble ain't going to come. It is going to come. We just got to be prepared. So that's it. That's all I got. This is a uh, real quick GMS and his likeness. Proverbs 14, 27. The fear of the Lord is a fountain of life to depart from the snares of death. No matter what happened, we're going to be calling on the name of the Lord. If I go to the guillotine, I'm going to be saying the name of the Lord up until that, that blade hit my neck. Azana Ma, 2nd Ezra 6, 22. And suddenly shall the sown places appear unsown. The full storehouses shall suddenly be found empty. And the trumpet shall sound, which when every man hear it, they shall be suddenly afraid. That's right. That time is coming. The famine is already um, prophesied. Not just a famine of the word, but also a famine of food. This is 12 tribes. I'm sorry. Neil of Ecclesiasticus 2.15. They that fear the Lord will not disobey his word. And they that love him will keep his ways. That's right. 12 tribes of Israel out of Switzerland. Psalms 59.13. Consume them in wrath. Consume them that they may not be and let them know that the most high rules in, in Jacob unto the ends of the earth. Say law. That's, that's it. And that's what we know. We know that the most high rules. And that's that's how we that's what we find our comfort at. We ain't worried about what these devils got planned. So I put the links up to all those um, articles. So Lord willing, you, you know, if you want to go do a lesson on it, feel free. And uh, that's pretty much it. So we'll see you again soon, Lord willing. All praise to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai. Double honor to the apostles and elders of the great millstone. All right? Shalom. I don't even know how to cut this thing off. We'll see you soon, Lord willing. Come on.